Welcome to the Open Door Church podcast. We are a church in Enid, Oklahoma, whose mission is to share and show Jesus to Enid, Oklahoma, and the rest of the world. If we can answer any questions you have or help you in any way, please feel free to reach out to us on social media or visit our website at opendoorenid.church. Well, good morning and happy Father's Day to you guys out there. And man, I hope today is full of bacon and like guns and loud cars, fast cars, all that kind of stuff for you guys. Um, I wish that for you. And also, this is a day of zero chores. So ladies, that's just how it works. I I don't know if you knew that, but that's just, it's kind of how it works today. So... It's Father's Day. So what do you think of when you think of summer? I think of snow cones, um, the smell of fresh cut grass, you know, uh, grilling out, all these amazing things, going on vacation. I don't know what you think of when you think of summer. Um, but we, we're, we're starting the, the series today, uh, and it's called Summer Playlist. And for me, I love doing all those things, but I like doing it with a playlist, like with some music going. And so when we're grilling out, we have a little speaker thing, and we like to have it going. When we drive, when we go on vacation, we have certain, like, playlists. You know, we have certain things that we listen to, and it kind of just make, it creates some atmosphere. It makes it fun. Well, that's, that's what we're going to be doing. For the next five weeks, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, and this is going to be our summer playlist. And honestly, like, life has been difficult. Uh, things are crazy. And so um, our hope is that for the next five weeks, these Psalms can just encourage us. You know, kind of be our playlist, kind of just be comforting. And um, so that's what we're doing for the next five weeks. Uh, Today we're going to start with Psalm 1. Um, And I don't know about you guys. Do you guys, uh, raise your hand if you trick-or-treated. I, as a kid, definitely trick-or-treated. My parents took me uh, to my grandparents' neighborhood because that's where the big candy was, you know. And whenever we uh, would go trick-or-treating, my uncles would come, and believe it or not, they would dress up and always go, uh uh-huh, one for the big kids too. And they seriously got more candy than us, always. Um, But I don't know about you, but when we trick-or-treated, I I would just, I don't know why, but I just wanted to look in their house. Did you feel that way? I just kind of was like, yeah, I'll take the candy, but man, that's that's a cool, you know, I don't know why. It's like, you just want to be sneaky and kind of peek around. Well, that's, that's what Psalm 1 is, okay? It's a peek. It's like the entryway into the house. It's like, the, it's like a good peek into what all the psalms are, okay? So it's really like a general psalm that, that helps us get to know where we're going for, uh, for the rest of the psalms. And psalm a day keeps the devil away, so we're going to jump in. All right. Um, so this first psalm is known as the psalm of two paths, Okay, the Psalm of Two Paths. And uh, just last week, me and Eli, we, we took a little dirt bike trip, and we went to Call Lake. Um, how, how many of you guys have ever been to Call Lake? Some of you guys. Um, never been there before. It's a beautiful place. And, and we got there, and that, that's us trying to look tough. Um, <laughs> that's as good as it gets. But we, uh, so we went to Call Lake, and, and we, where, where you first kind of take off, you, you're on the shoreline. So you're just going on the shoreline. It's really cool. You can see boats, you know, fishing and all this stuff. And then um, it gets to a certain point where you have to go up into the woods. And, and so I've never been there before. Eli's never been there before. We have no idea where we're at or where we're going. Um, we're also on dirt bikes, which don't tell you how much gas you have, right? And, um, or how fast you're going, for that matter. But so we take off into the woods and we're going for a while. And I don't know if you've ever had this feeling. I got this feeling like, um, I have no idea where I'm at. I, it just hit me like, I have no idea where I'm at. I don't know how much gas we have. And we've been going for a long time. And it just kind of hit me like, oh man. And so I kind of told Eli, hey, stop for a second. And, um, and so we stopped and just kind of got my bearings. And, and I looked up at the sun and I'm like, all right, this way is the shore. We're going back this way. And we're going to find the shore and we will get back and then we'll, you know, get a drink or something and, and, and maybe make sure we have gas and that kind of stuff. And, and so we did. And, and because of, you know, being able to see where the sun was, I could see where the shore was and it got us right back where we needed to go. And sometimes in life, we, we lose our bearings. Uh, we get off. We, we focus on the wrong things. And um, we get lost and, and we just we don't know where to go. And, and guys, all we have to do is look to Jesus. 
He's always there. We just look to him, and he, that's what he does. He's our guide. He shows us where we need to go and what we need to do, and he's not trying to hide that from us, okay? And, um, and so sometimes we just need to stop what we're doing, and we just need to look to Jesus. And so that's what we're going to do this morning in Psalm 1. And so I would encourage you, um, if you have your Bible or a tablet or your phone or whatever, turn to Psalm 1. It's six verses long. If you don't have that, it'll be on the screen. And I always like to encourage you to take notes, man. Um, there's things that later in the week you might need that you might forget if you don't write down. So I'm the kind of person I always like to take notes. I would encourage you in that. So uh, follow along with me in Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And all on his law... He meditates day and night. He is like the tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. And then, then it shifts gears. So we talked about the two paths. The first bit is the first path. Here's the second path, verse 4. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff in the wind uh, that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. That's strong language right there, and we'll, we'll get into it. So verse 1, the very first word of the first psalm is blessed. And this, is, uh, this word comes from a Hebrew word. I'm going to butcher it, but it's called asherah. That sounds right. feels right. I think it's right. Okay. But that means happy. That means happy. And, and specifically, it means, oh, how happy. Okay? And um, so next, next he goes into this list of, of these three postures. Okay? So he jumps right into these three things that a person doesn't do. First, he's going to talk about what this person doesn't do. And then he'll talk about what he does. First, he says, walks in the counsel of the wicked. Okay, it's talking about bad advice, hanging out with people that are giving you bad advice, hanging out with people, listening to the wrong voices. So first, he, he walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Second thing, then it, it kind of goes a little deeper, and then he doesn't stand in the way of sinners. And so it's talking about now, now they've become your friends, and so he's talking about bad friends. Something I used to say uh, to teenagers, which I think relates to us as adults as well, is show me your friends and I'll show you your future. It's just... Who you hang out with affects who you are. It, you are so affected by the people that you let speak into your life. And then the last part, he says um, that he won't sit in the seat of scoffers. And so now it started off, um, you know, you're kind of hearing their, their bad advice. Then you're hanging out with them. And now you're sitting with them, meaning that you've become them and you're starting to copy them. Okay, so it just kind of went from deeper to deeper there. It's this progression. You're listening to them, you're hanging with them, and now you're, you're becoming them. Okay, and so then before you think this guy's all negative, um, he, he, I just want to tell you, um, or give you this example, I guess. If you're, if you're going to get in shape, and um, if maybe you're trying to lose your corona 15, like me, um, so you, you make the decision not to eat ice cream while you're in bed. I'm not speaking from experience, I'm just saying. And you make the decision not to down a whole bag of chips and drink pop and all these things that you know are just not good for you. Um, and um, same thing, like uh, if you want to have a good relationship with your wife, you turn off the TV and you pray with her before you go to bed. These are things that you're saying no to something um, so that you can say yes to something, right? And so sometimes saying no is the first step to saying yes. Sometimes the f saying no is the first step to saying yes. And, and sometimes we get overambitious and we're like, we just, yeah, I want to do that. But sometimes we have to say no first in order to say yes. And talking about happiness, talking about being happy, and that's, like I said, the very first word of this, blessed, happy, right? Happiness, if, we, if we're just seeking happiness, we'll never find it. We will never find it if we're just seeking happiness. But happiness is a byproduct of seeking and being with God. Happiness comes from being with God, from seeking him. And then happiness is, it's awesome. It comes from 
a relationship with God. That's where true happiness is going to, and then it's going to come out in your relationships. It's going to come out in your life. And many times we're focusing on the wrong things instead of God, and then we're wondering why we can't get happy. We think if we buy this or we hang out with these people or go on this awesome trip, we're going to be happy. Sure, it's fun. It's going to be happy for a minute. But that true joy, that deep happiness, um, it doesn't come. Oh, how happy, as that Hebrew word says. So I just want to ask you this morning, are you ready to say no to some things so that you can say yes to some things that matter more? Are you ready? Are you ready to say no? Because I really believe um, to grow in our walk with God and to grow closer to God and to hear from Him and to truly be happy, we have to be ready to say no to some things um, so that we can say yes to some other things. Guys, that was verse 1. We have 6, so let's get to 2. Uh, so, so first he talks about bless, blessed is the man, um, happy is the person, and he, he describes him by what he doesn't do. So now he, he shifts gears and, and he's described by what he does. So what does he do? Um, it says that he delights in reading God's word. Isn't that interesting? Delights in reading God's word. This is not an obligation for him. This is not a checklist for him. This is a joy. I want to sit down. I want to hear what God has to say through his word to me. Um, it talks about meditating on it. And um, specifically, uh, this verse, uh, it's talking about the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay? Well, we ha- that's what they had at that point. We have all 66 books of the Bible. We have no excuse. We have, uh, you know, the Gospels. We have Old Testament, the New Testament. We have so much that we can read and meditate on. And um, so to, it says to meditate. Uh, this is the opposite of uh, the meditation that you might hear of in the world um, where you're trying to get everything out of your mind. Uh, this is uh, biblical. The meditation that they're talking about here would be to fill your mind with Christ, fill your mind with the Bible, okay? So we're meditating on it. It's like, I don't know about you guys, but 105 is the number for me on hot tub. It needs to be 105, soak in it. You just sit till you literally can't move, and you have to get a drink or you're going to die. That is hot tub soaking for me. Um, it's like Laffy Taffy chewing, you know? You chew till you get a cavity. That's, that's the same thing, same thing with meditating on God's Word. You, it, you soak in it, you know? You, you chew it. You, you just really uh, spend a lot of time in God's Word. That's, that's what this is saying. And then in uh, verse 3, I want to read it. Um, verse 3 says, He's like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither, and all it does, uh, in all that he does, he prospers. And so now it's this picture of a tree. And, and I want you to notice something. This tree is planted, it's not potted, okay? There's a difference there, and there's a reason that it's planted and not potted. It's because it's permanent. This tree is permanent. It is a part of, it goes down deep into the ground. It doesn't have the limitations of a pot. It's planted. And uh, this tree, it says that it's thriving, it's thriving in this dry climate. How's it doing it? Because it's right next to the stream and its roots go right into the stream. All right? And, and because uh, of that, this tree is producing all kinds of fruit. It's producing all kinds of fruit. And so it's just that's what the prospering is, is that this tree is producing all kinds of fruits, prospering. It's mature. It's full grown. And um, I want to say something to you this morning. If you are a, a follower of Jesus, if you're following Jesus and you are becoming mature um, and your, your roots are down deep into the water and you're producing fruit, if fruit is coming out of your life from being a follower of Jesus, it, the fruit's not just for you. Okay? The fruit is for you to share. Um, the blessings that God gives you in a relationship with him, are that fruit is not just for you. So share. Uh, you're blessed to be a blessing. You know, um, you, God blesses you so that you can bless the people that are in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you're f- fruitful spiritually, when you're healthy spiritually, you affect every single person around you. And the opposite is true. When you're not healthy spiritually, you affect every single person around you in a negative way. Um, verse 4, uh, it's, now it's, it's talking about the second path. And guys, it's strong language that he uses here. Strong language. He says wicked. 
That's, he's talk, the first guy is the guy that's you know, following Jesus, has a relationship with him, strong, healthy, all those things. And then it gets, I mean, I think it's pretty strong. It says wicked, the path of the wicked. Um, so these are people that literally by, by not following Jesus, they're opposing God. So we got two paths here. There's no gray middle area. This is two paths, two completely opposite paths. And it says um, that, he, and then, then he uses this example of, the husks and the, and the straw that are removed by, by threshing. And so, do you have a picture of that up, Trenton? Okay, so um, we don't do it like this anymore. We have combines, but I'm just saying. Um, the wheat, the, the threshing, what they do, they throw it up in the air, and then the wind blows off the light stuff, which is the straw and the husk, which is what goes around the, the kernel or the wheat. Um, and that is how they, they used to do it, and that's what this is talking about, okay? So the kernels, they come back down, they end up in the basket, you grind them up, you make some bread, um, but everything else just goes to the ground. It just falls on the ground, it's worthless, it's worth nothing. And so, again, this is like a strong example. Um, and, and he basically says that those that, that reject God or don't follow him, um, you're like the straw and the husks and the, and the chaff that's just kind of left on the ground. It's, it's not doing anything. It's not producing anything. It's not, it can't be used for anything. And then, um, but these kernels that remain, um, you know, they're, they're life-giving. Man, we can eat that bread and, um, yeah. But those who follow God and chase after him and his plan for their life, they will remain and the winds of life are not going to, they're not going to be affected by it. The wind is going to blow. Guys, the wind's going to blow for all of us. We all know that. We've all had hard times. Um, that we know for certain. Life is not easy, okay? So whether you're following Jesus or not, that wind's going to come. But what this is telling us is that the, the people that follow Jesus, they will remain, okay? And so that gives me hope as a follower of Jesus, that, man, I know that God is going to, he's going to be there with me and for me, um, but it also breaks my heart for people that don't know Jesus. It breaks my heart because I know that, that they don't have that hope of a future in heaven with God. And this earth uh, is not real fun if you don't have God to go to when things are difficult. You're alone, and it's, there's no hope. It's just hard to live. Life can be tough. Um, but what I want to tell you this morning is that you can't be the chaff and the kernel at the same time. You can't run to God and from him at the same time. You can't. So that's why there's two paths here. You can either follow God or, or you can run from him. And that, that's, I'm a black or white person. I was talking to Justin and Trenton about this earlier. I love this passage because I'm black or white. I don't understand gray. Just tell me what to do. And this passage is like that. Where it just, it's just so clear. Like you, you can either follow God with your life and it's going to look like this. Or you can run from him and it's going to look like this. And so you can't live in two camps. You can't live in two camps. Um, and then he kind of closes this whole thing. Uh, verse, verse five, verses 5 and 6 kind of uh, in the whole thing. And it just says that God knows if you're for him or, or if you're against him. He knows. You may be able to fool everybody around you in your life. God knows if you're for him or you're against him. And what I want to tell you is that there is hope. No matter what you've done in your life, no matter who you've been up to today, there's forgiveness there. God is just waiting to, to forgive you. Um, and he has so much love and grace that he's just waiting to pour out on you. Um, and, and so if you're here today and you're at that point and you're like, hey, I see what you're saying. I, I believe that all that's true. Um, just know that there's nothing but grace and love that God has for you. He's not condemning. Um, and he, he wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to help you in your life. He doesn't want you to be alone. And, um, and so the real question is this this morning. Are you like a tree where your roots are down into the stream and, and you're, you're producing fruit? Like you're, you're good. You're healthy. Or, or, is, or, or are you more like the straw, you know, that's just, you don't, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what your focus is. You don't know what your purpose is. Because you don't know God. And the winds of life are just beating you down. And you're at a place where you're like, I, I don't know what to do next, but I know this isn't working. Um, this, this passage, like I said, it's two polar opposites. 
We can either live a, a blessed life. That doesn't mean perfect. That doesn't mean everything's going to go perfect. But a, a good life where we have God and we have hope, no matter what, that ends in heaven with God, you know, when we die. Or we can live a life uh, that is empty here on earth, and then in, when we die, we have separation from God forever in a place called hell that was not meant for anybody but the devil and his angels, okay? I love this verse, 2 Peter 3, 9. Um, I'm not going to read the verse, but it says that God is not willing that any should perish. And what that means is that it is God's desire that every single person that he created would follow him. That's God's desire. His desire is that every person that he's ever created, and that includes every one of you in this room, God wants to know you intimately. He wants to have a personal relationship with you, and he wants you to walk with him. Man, in this world, for me, I don't know about you, but it is so easy to focus on stuff that doesn't matter. So easy to focus on stuff that doesn't matter. Compare myself to people that it's just stupid. Um, you know, social media can be cool, but can also be terrible um, whenever you're not on vacation and someone else is, you know, and when someone else did get a new car and you did not. And you know what I'm saying? It can be uh, when you're having a bad day and somebody else is having a good day, it can be bad, that comparison thing. Um, but it's so easy for me to focus on stuff that won't last forever. But true happiness comes when we focus on God. When we focus on his will, when we focus on his purposes for our life. That's where true happiness comes. It doesn't come from the things of this world. Because happiness is a byproduct of being with God and seeking God. And then out of that comes true joy. Will you bow your heads with me this morning? God, I'm so thankful for this first psalm. I'm so thankful, God, just for the clarity, the black and white of following you versus running from you. And God, I just thank you for every person in this room. I thank you, God, that we've been able to worship you and just read your word this morning. I just want to ask you, God, to to give us boldness to respond to you however it is that you want us to respond this morning. Uh, Maybe we just need to sing out. Maybe we need to pray. Maybe today's the day where someone just needs to give their life to you and just begin following you. God, we, were, we, we know we weren't meant to live this life on our own, out of our own strength. God, thank you that you love us, you care about the details of our life. And I'm so thankful that nothing that we can do or have ever done would separate us from your love and your grace. So God, may, may we just run to you this morning in these moments. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Guys, if you would stand during this time, um, we're going to sing. Uh, if you need prayer, or if you, maybe you're at the point this morning, you're like, hey, I want to I go on the, the good path, uh, and I, I want to give my life to Christ. Me and Justin will be in the back. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to talk to you. Uh, but this is, this is your time. This, this time of response is between you and God. And so uh, maybe you just need to close your eyes. Maybe you just need to sing out. Maybe you need to just sit down and pray. Whatever you need to do. This time is between you and God.